Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, February 7, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We have any time for change call tonight around 9 p.m. Eastern. I've got a lot of information to share with people. For us to know that which will totally satisfy our hearts and fulfill every yearning within our soul is not a small matter. When it comes down to it, the level of devotion that we have to finding real freedom, which is the enlightened state, is a reflection of how much we actually love ourselves. Life is a test of our depth of self-love. And the level, the level of enlightenment or freedom we experience along the way determines how often and quickly we can summon the quality of unstoppable inner peace, creativity, or compassion for others. It is the base factor that determines how successful we are on our spiritual path and the main reason and purpose why we are all here. It's only through the infinite exploration of our inner journey that we can experience a real sense of freedom in our lives. It is an ironic thing, yet in the enlightened state, we see that everyone is enlightened except for ourselves. We realize that there truly is no self, and thus there is no more suffering. It may be hard to comprehend because we are so accustomed to being identified with this mind, ego, and body. Yet the more we realize our true nature, the more we discover a life that is free from any form of pain. This freedom is the great spiritual peak that we are each here to climb and conquer. Every great work, every great accomplishment has been brought into manifestation through holding to the vision and often just before the big achievement comes, apparent failure and discouragement. Lawrence Scoville Shin. One personal word of advice if you are on your journey is to be patient with yourself as there are a thousand brilliant obstacles along the way. On this great journey, the difference between illusion and reality is very, very, very slim and will create many veils between the mind and our consciousness. We may forget many times that the highest state of freedom is here available right now waiting for us. It is like Mount Everest, always there yet often hidden behind the clouds. Very few have the courage to even attempt to climb. So don't give up if you don't arrive on your first or hundredth crack at it. There will always be another moment in the future, or perhaps another lifetime, when you will have more desire, courage, trust, and a fierce penetrating laser-like awareness to burn through the cloudy veils of the mind. A, a great quote from Oscar Wilde is, Be yourself, everyone else is already taken. We always are learning what we need to know, most need to know. Sometimes it provides us with negative experiences so that we learn how to deepen, soften, and let go. While other times, we receive positive experiences, so remember how sacred every breath and heartbeat truly are. If we were to look closely at our life, 
we would notice that there is and has always been a constant swinging from positive to negative life experience and then back and forth. So it's like a pendulum on a clock. It swing is there for one very divine reason so that we learn how to be free from both extremes and are forced to discover the deeply creative, all-powerful, manifesting being we truly are. As we naturally grow and mature in this life, we realize that our problems cannot be solved by changing the outer world. We see that our real issues shift by diving into our inner world, reaching towards our true center, where we can clearly see how each problem is an opportunity for greater enlightenment and transformation. Now, we've all devoted and committed ourselves to ascend into higher levels of consciousness. And when we accept this as truth, we can let go of playing the role of the hero, victim, or perpetrator in our lives. This enables us to truly enjoy the natural swing of life's pendulum, and we can fall deeper into the enjoyment as long as we continue to breathe. The more deeply we breathe, the more we drop our mind chatter. And the easier it is to connect with the divine consciousness at the center of our being. It is here that we find our real power to choose how we wish to relate, respond to each pendulum swing. We can sit back and observe how our mind may try to control the pendulum Avoid it, ignore it, or simply accept it is happening. When we surrender and accept it, we can decide to transcend it completely. Then we are no longer slaves to the good and bad occurrences of this crazy world. Only abiding at the center of our being can we remember that we are the ultimate authority of our reality. And this is where our true freedom is. And it becomes obvious that we manifest and what we manifest is purely determined by where and what we are focusing our attention on. To find everlasting peace with this pendulum, we must learn to trust in it. Life is scheduled in these pivotal extremes so that we stop clinging to it all and learn how to see the grand unfoldment of our soul's journey. Every high and low extreme is designed to crack our hearts and minds wide open so that we surrender to our highest power and know without a doubt that it's possible to manifest anything we want. The great pendulum swing summons our soul to reach all the way inwards until we are living and breathing a spiritual life. We really don't care about anything less than this. We want it all. It is from rooting ourselves in our spiritual journey that our consciousness blossoms, makes each day more amazing than the last. The real growth of our spiritual path in this life comes from feeling into what's uncomfortable. Our pain pushes us to reach deeper inside so we are beyond the reach of the pendulum swing and can find the silent stillness that is unmoving at the core of our being. This stillness is our real teacher in life. It shows us that happiness is not all about getting what we want, what we think we want. It's not about controlling the low swing, remaining in the middle, or staying at the high point. Real happiness comes from knowing we are already truly free. 
We are free from the ever-changing pendulum and whatever painful extreme it may move into. This freedom feeling is like taking a bath in the eternal fountain of youth, where we naturally recognize our true enlightened nature that always was and will always be beyond it all. How can the eternal self have attachment? It is always pure, untainted, and unattached. It is always opening, experiencing presence. We are pure reality. We are the imperishable self. We were never born, and we never did prevail, and we will never die. We are the one, the all-pervading one. The only work is to just drop into what is, Robert Adams. It's good to know that we all were born to experience an initial clinging to this life. Yet we were not meant to hold on to this clinging forever. If we are getting wrapped up in the drama of our lives, wrapped in a negative emotion or heavy thought pattern, we are just overly identified with our mind. We've forgotten we are more than just a body and ego identity. We are an eternal soul that will live forever. This world is made of energy, information, and intelligence that is always changing. Whenever we get stuck, fixated, or hooked on any one thing, idea, or expectation, we get hooked into the illusion, and this adds extra weight to our pendulum. Our pendulum becomes spring-loaded, and when we hit an extreme, it then catapults back to the opposite direction to reach an even further extreme. The only way to transcend this perpetual intensity and annoying repetition is to return to the stillness at the center. That is at our core, beyond the mind. When we drop deep inside and become super vigilant with our thoughts, we'll be able to see and feel the pendulum swing coming before it actually happens. We notice the mind's preference towards having to have only a positive experience and not a negative one. Again, the more attached we become, the more we suffer in the swing. So the next time this occurs, become aware of the experience without becoming identified with the experience. For example, the mind might say, ah, because this is manifested now, my life is truly good. Or since this just happened now, my life is horrible. This is how the mind gets hooked by the play of life and the divine pendulum swing. Don't, do not get hooked by the judgmental mind. Instead, just notice what was it that hooked you? And trust the momentum will soon swing in the opposite direction the very moment you relax, breathe, and let go. Stop imagining yourself being or doing this or that and the realization that you are the source and heart of all will dawn on you. Figure out a mirage. So for the next 24 hours, I invite everyone to partake in a little enlightening experiment. Pay attention to your inner pendulum. Dedicate one full day of your life to watching it move. Start with noticing where you think you are at on the pendulum swing right now. Are you at a high point in your life? Down in the dumpsters or stuck flat in the middle? Take one giant step back from your life and welcome a larger perspective on reality. 
you'll see that it doesn't matter so much where your pendulum is temporarily at. Yet more importantly is how you are relating to it and who you are defining yourself to be from this assessment. The moment you moment-to-moment practice of watching your pendulum will help you discover that it's like what it's like to reach your natural enlightened state. Be gentle with yourself on this journey as it truly requires a completely quiet, open mind to see all of the life with clear, non-judgmental eyes. Be aware when you notice yourself judging others or yourself, as this means you're about to get hooked into thinking that you are this one high or low experience. You are not just any one life experience. You are all of them. Remain the detached watcher and calm witnesser as much as you can with your mind, just so that own this greater truth. Then your entire day becomes a journey into liberation. Pendulum will swing on its own from high to low. And as you watch, you always remain free. You can then be free from all insecurity and fear because you know life's pendulum and time will swing back into security and confidence again and again and again. We discover ourselves from how we view ourselves. And and it's, it's, it's you watching you, not judging you, but watching you. And this is a, it's a challenge for a lot of people to, how in the heck do you watch yourself? Looking at a sunset just for a second you forget your separateness. You are the sunset. That is the moment when you feel the beauty of it. But the moment you say that it is a beautiful sunset, you are no longer feeling it. You have come back to your separate enclosed entity of the ego. This is a good practice to and I've talked about it before, but to brace who and what you are, this is a good exercise to do that. At first, it seems kind of strange, but you will get in the habit of it, that whatever you say, that is the God that I am. Whatever view it is, whatever situation, that is the God that I am. Try it. You'd be amazed. Do it. Be amazed how things shift. And you'll get to the point where you're doing it all the time, so whatever you look at, someone will say, isn't that beautiful? And you say to yourself, that is the God that I am. It's not about ego mind. It's truly who and what you are. You're part of everything. All the energy, all the creation of all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. One of the things, it's, it's the ego mind that is a great asset in the beginning because it teaches us how to overcome it. Like in every moment we have a golden opportunity to choose trust over fear. We do. When we can learn how to let go of this tight grip we have on this life. Many people have this. I mean, it's heavy duty. They, they hold this, like, smother the life because they hold it so tight. We immediately make a more intimate space for a closer relationship with the divine healing intelligence that abides behind everything. All of our overly fearful, doubtful, and protective feelings will instantly fade away 
when we are trusting that a divine intelligence is always present in our lives. A softness blossoms inside. And we regain our natural ability to relax fully into our body and can start enjoying every detail about our present past and future. With deep trust, we can evolve as spiritual beings. But without it, we are lost. We can ascend to the point where we are trusting that every experience that this life brings us is absolutely divine and perfect. Even if an experience may be painful, the greater deep eternal loving is known and felt hidden inside. A trusting heart can quietly realize how a fear is our greatest teacher, always invoking a higher state of spiritual awareness into our future, so that we stop pretending to be these small, powerless, ego-driven beings and start living that truly amazing life we so love. It's like you've got, let's say you have two roads, both parallel, right? Both going the same direction. But you notice that the one road, everybody's laughing and jolly and, and peaceful and just e at ease. You notice that the road you're on is the opposite. It's challenging, tumultuous, and effective and you can't at first you're going well, what's the difference how come they're that way and those of us over here are this way the ones on the road parallel to you have discovered who and what they are the road that you're on with the others haven't it's real simple that's it right there the ones on the road to the right of you say, we're at peace. We have no need to want, desire anything. We have let everything go. And we, we've discovered it and we embrace intimately the gods that we are. Our egos are pretty much silent on the back burner. And we know that we are omnipotently powerful supreme beings that never die. This is when you talk with somebody, and I get emails about this all the time, when you talk with somebody that you, you might care about, or it could be a stranger, and you notice that they're on that road, right? The one where, you know, everybody is chasing something. So you, you figure, well, I'm going to say something or see if I can get their attention and guide them in a awakened direction rather than a sleep direction. So you do, you know, you give it a shot. And what happens is that in most, most cases, it's like it goes right through them and not one element of it stays with them. And then you realize that they aren't ready themselves yet to take that step into a freedom or enlightened state. And so we call it they're asleep. Are the gods within them any different than the gods within us? No, not at all. They're omnipotently supreme beings that will never die just like us, but they haven't reached a full understanding of who and what they are. So it, it might take them several more years or the next lifetime. And so you, be, you realize that, and so you just embrace them with love. You can do that from afar. And you just move on. So when we concentrate or we focus uh, on worshiping our spiritual nature over our ego, that means we're choosing trust over fear. Fear keeps us from 
many things, as we all know. If you're gripped with fear, what are you going to do? You're going to back away or run or cower and shiver. That's because we don't trust ourselves. So how many of us worship our ego? A lot. Worship our ego. But more and more people are beginning to worship their spiritual nature, which is trust. It's about a deep devotion to our real selves and being truly dedicated to filling up our precious time on this planet with more relaxation, appreciation, and joy instead of ego-driven anxieties, demands, and tension. With trust as our deepest guide, we can pierce through the ego's veil of ignorance and perceive those life-changing people and situations with the utmost patience and appreciation. Having no resistance to fear, we flow with the great spirit of life. And we know everything works itself out karmically in the very end. This is a very powerful level of trust, which instills such a fresh and lightning perspective about this life, which instantly liberates the mind from all negative thinking. With, with trust in charge, when we hit an emotional wall of resistance or fear, we open up to it instead of shut down even further. We feel into the wall, knowing there is always a bigger spiritual lesson behind it to be learned and looking forward to finding out what it is. This approach is what allows for a deeper state of peace to make its home inside our hearts and souls. Ask yourself, how much do you trust yourself? Because it all, it's all about you. How, how much do you trust yourself? Move into the heart-mind, ask yourself that question. It'll come to you. And when we focus on this, trust is such a powerful force that can turn the most ordinary life instantly into an extremely rich spiritual adventure. With trust, we do feel safe and connected with everyone we meet and naturally are overflowing with an effervescent joy in all directions. So we tend to respond to others with compassion instead of criticism, curiosity instead of impatience, and understanding instead of judgment. Every moment of this life becomes a new doorway that opens up to the highest and deepest aspects of our being. And it's a choice. It's a choice. We're, we're either going to decide on fear or trust. One of the two. Okay. Now, does it mean that we're totally cogn cognitive, right, aware of doing that? Not really. Right? Because the ego mind is so tricky. So we know it's a choice. Then we discover our power to either expand or contract our experience of this life in each moment. And this power enables us to become the spiritual masters of our destiny. We no longer fear life. We, have, we embrace it all. And as we gain more trusting momentum, we're able to remain only in the trust vibration for longer periods of time. We understand 
how to skyrocket our consciousness in a matter of minutes and eventually catapult our lives into the fifth dimensional realm of the divine because our frequencies have been greatly increased. Trust is the magical gateway to our true unlimited nature as it transcends the ego, opens the door to our most enlightened state of consciousness. Most of us, most of us, is that if fear has been dominating our lives, retreat. You can let go, forgive yourself, free the others, and release whatever has happened in your, your past. You can move on. It is not worth it. To hang on to any low vibration for another day. Believe, trust that all the trauma you received in this life was given by God to wake you up. Who is the God within that body? To wake you up from this deep, sleepy dream. Are all of us asleep? I don't believe so. The majority of us are asleep. And everyone, uh, everyone that is asleep has been caught in some dramatic, perpetually self-wounding victim spin cycle. Taught to never, never to trust in this life, ourselves, or anyone else again. Have you met people like that? Bitter, angry, frustrated, fearful, that every, around every corner they're going to get screwed again. And guess what? What happens? They manifest that. And sure enough, they get screwed again. And we, when we just let go and remember that we are still lovable, worthy, and totally amazing, exactly as we are, You know, we have just committed to be in a massive class in spiritual growth and radical enlightened maturity. Whatever our past life circumstances might have been, we were always given the choice how we wish to respond to them now. Every time we choose trust over fear, everyone heart, everyone's heart opens a bit wider we feel a more gentle, healing, heartwarming energy coming in. This warm, trusting heart is needed in this life. For the divine intelligent, the universe is always testing our level of awareness, checking in to see how awake we truly are. The test is always the same. How will we choose to respond? With more trust or fear? It might throw us a bag of super sour lemons just to see if we know how to add some playful creative sweetness and make a pitcher of lemonade. What will happen on this planet to not value the gift of a human incarnation is like trading a diamond for a head of cabbage, Vedic Sage. The respect reverence that we have for each other is paramount. It's good to know that the opposite of fear is not love. It is trust. Yet, through living a life of trust, we naturally start falling in love with everyone and everything. With 100% trust, we become a loveaholic of life feeling naturally orgasmic about this precious opportunity that we have to live, feeling completely turned on by this chance to find our spiritual path and connection. The expansive feeling in the heart can become so divinely open that every breath feels as though we are making love with the divine. 
Now, are you ready to sign up for choosing a life devoted to always responding with trust yet? That's a question to ask yourself, to ponder. The spiritual power we receive from the trust vibration is simply awesome. Total trust effortlessly engulfs all kinds of egoic negativity that may try to dominate any room. When a person has, who has 100% unshakable trust enters any community, it's so penetrating and contagious that everyone's ego eventually falls into another embarrassment or humility. When this group of people all simultaneously begin choosing trust over fear, you can feel this giddy, enlightening joy exponentially expanding through everyone's lives. Group energy becomes more relaxed and at ease with their life, their future, and everything as it is. How much do you trust yourself? To live a life flowing with trust, it's important to understand that fear is not a bad thing. It's just not something we want behind making any of our decisions. If we make fear-based decisions in this life, we will only create fear-based outcomes. I mean, that's a given. There's no contesting that. There's no debating it. It is a given. If we, tr if, if we avoid fear or attempt to delete it completely from our lives, what happens? It will come sneaking back in when our guard is down. Fearful thoughts are here to wake us up to invite in our biggest self, as they are simply small, contracted truths about reality. So it's like you can look at a grain of sand, right? It's not a big deal, right? Except when it gets caught in your eye. amazing how something so small can create such a huge pain. In walking the path of fear, where are we living from? Our ego. Because the ego is always feeling either superior or inferior. We become very controlling and judgmental Living in ego, we become narrow-minded and completely unaware that we are abiding in a very small, limiting truth. We know we are living from ego because we feel constantly unsatisfied, perpetually searching for the next fantastic thing or new pleasure to escape into. The ego does not know what inner peace is. It is untrusting of new things, sticking only to what is comfortable and often feels caught and needing to protect itself from our emotions and feelings. And the ego is always new. It, it is always new ways to hide or shine because it does not trust our inner light will always be there to guide us through the darkness. Now, one might ask the question, how, do, how does one choose trust over fear? We need to take a more sensitive approach to feeling into ourselves so we can see when we are in a state of trust or fear. We can check in at any moment of our day what is going on in the area around our heart and chest. If it feels expansive and light, and we're in a state of trust. And if it's tight and heavy, we're holding on to fear. 
the general feeling we carry in our chest is our trust barometer to see what types of joy, what types of choices we're making every day. When we are living each day of our lives in fear, we tend to want to control everything and force our way through life. We tend to live in this hurry-it-up mode, rushing through each sacred experience, missing out on the small precious moments where it could have felt as heavenly angels were present. Now, when trust does not become a natural response to this life, we become afraid to make decisions. We stop taking risks. We feel stuck in some weird emotional prison and perpetually unhappy for no reason at all. When fear is more important than trust, we feel like a failure in this life. Instead of simply removing the small speck of sand from our own eye, we spend our time trying to change ourselves, others, and the outer world. Once we discover how to trust and the experience of trust, a bigger truth takes over. It takes over our lives, and the walls of our fearful, boxed-in life slowly fall away. Now, if one needs to liberate themselves from a fearful state, they must welcome all of their fears with 100% trust and remember everything is perfect exactly as it is. The universe never makes mistakes. We simply have to accept or choose to accept every pile of manure as a message that we need more fertilizer. If our life or mind becomes too overwhelming or challenging, simply refocus your awareness back onto the biggest feeling of trust that you can remember. Dwell only on that trusting feeling for one to two hours. Give yourself permission to stop dwelling on what you fear. In a very short time, you can find the spiritual light starts seeping back into your very soul Again, join you in the meditation. I'll return to close us out.
take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. Easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Have no attachment to the mind. Notice how your thoughts come and go as they will. Get really curious and watch closely how the mind is just doing its thing. It's either following thoughts, expressing thoughts, letting them float on by, or watching them fade away. I'm wondering, which thoughts do you most enjoy thinking? Which thoughts would you like to hear repeating? Pay more attention to those thoughts, because whatever we focus on grows. Choose wisely. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We'll return here Thursday, tonight, uh, February 7th, around 9 p.m. Eastern for a TFCC. And Thursday, February 8th, 2024, 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the night and evening the following morning. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest eternal gratitude. At all times, no matter what's happening within you or outside of you, be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times.